All right, so someone asked, what's the problem with money? Why is there so many problems surrounding money today? What is going on? All right, so if you wanna figure out something, it's often good to simplify the situation as much as possible and start with a clean slate. So we wanna figure out what's going on with money. First, let's take out the money. Let's, let's make it so we start with a world with no money. And now to keep it simple, let's start with a really simple world. And in this little world, we've got a chicken farmer and a corn farmer. And the chicken farmer can eat all the chickens he wants. Mark, 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 yum. And the corn farmer can eat all the corn on the cob he wants. But eating one thing all the time is not the best. So the corn farmer goes over to the chicken farmer with a sack of corn and says, hey, can I trade this sack of corn for a chicken? And the chicken farmer says, why, absolutely yes. And they trade one chicken for one sack of corn. And then the chicken farmer's like, hey, you know, if you gave me some corn, I could feed my chickens and they would make more eggs. And then I could give you some surplus eggs. Yeah? Oh, and they start figuring out the value that they have to exchange to make these things fair. And then great, right? Except that one day the, the corn farmer, he has his harvest and he gets his harvest all at once. And he goes to the chicken farmer and he's like, ah, chicken farmer, could I? Could I give you like 10 sacks of corn, like all at once, like right now? Cause this is, I, I just have them right now. And chicken farmer's like, whoa, 10 sacks of corn at once. Okay, I can find a place to put them. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, bring them in here. Okay, now how are you gonna take your 10 chickens? And the corn farmer's like, yeah, I can't really take 10 chickens at once. Is there a way I can get one chicken like per week for the next 10 weeks? And so they, they sit down and figure out, okay, we were, we've got to write a contract and we'll have a ledger and we'll keep track of how many chickens you have. And at the end of 10 weeks, if you get one every week, then I will have paid for my corn. Okay, uh, got it. Okay, we got this, we got it, we got it worked out. Great, okay. So corn farmer goes home. Two weeks later, he's like, oh, I spent all my corn on chickens that I don't currently have yet, but I really need some bricks. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go to Brick Guy and say, hey, hey, Brick Guy, I need 500 bricks. And Brick Guy's like, all right, that's uh, five sacks of corn, 500 bricks, no problem. And Corn Guy's like, ah, but I, I don't actually have the corn. Uh, and Brick Guy's like, well, what do, you, what do you have? And Corn Guy's like, well, I have, I have like eight chickens still. And, uh, Brick guy's like, oh, five chickens, 500 bricks. Yeah? And uh, corn guy's like, yeah, but I don't actually have the chickens. They're kind of like, I, we have a contract and oh, we got we to gotta, gotta get together and uh, maybe you can get your name on five of the chickens that are coming or maybe we'll be able to get them all at once. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we're gonna have to work this out. And then, you know, corn guy, and chicken guy and brick guy kind of get together one day. They're like, you know what? <sighs> I'm so busy working my fields and feeding my chickens and making my bricks. Uh, it's just it's just too much trying to keep track of all these contracts. It's just, you know, it's it's distracting me from 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 my life from what I what I'm really trying to do here. And they're all like, yeah, this is this is. If only there was some way we could make it easier to exchange things. When, when one person isn't necessarily ready to exchange the thing, but they have the thing, but they don't... Yeah, if there was only something like, like some sort of money, money, let's just call it money. If we had some kind of money, and I could just use the money as a placeholder and say, here, this money is worth 100 bricks. So can I buy a chicken from you? And at any point in time, you can bring that, that IOU back to me, and I'll give you 100 bricks. You know, that kind of thing. That would be amazing. So they come up with some way. And at the beginning, when it's just a few people, it could be just like uh, little pieces of paper or, or like, like wooden nickels or, or anything that's easy to make. They just, they just make a bunch and like, okay, here, you have five of those. You have five of those. Here, you have five of those. And we'll just use them to exchange amongst ourselves. But then they're like, well, every, we could get, we could, you know, work this out with, with the guy over there, and the guy over there, and the guy over there, and the guy over there, or the lady, the guy or lady, I'm not being gender specific here. And then, but the more people you get involved in this, 
the more it's an issue of trust. Because then people start thinking, well, I don't know if I trust that guy to not just make a bunch of wood nickels. So now we need to make some kind of money that's not easy to make. Or some kind of money where you have to put in some kind of value to create it. And then they come up with, okay, well, what if we use precious metals? We use gold and silver and copper. And then we, we figure out what one, what one silver piece is worth. So one silver piece will buy a chicken or one sack of corn or a hundred bricks or one unit of this or that or whatever. And they all kind of agree on this. And they're like, okay, yeah, this works. Because if someone goes off and makes more silver coins, that's not an easy thing to do. They got to mine the silver. They got to put value into it. So they're not just stealing. They're actually putting value in. Okay, so every, this is fine. Um, <clears throat> so they start using that. And then you get businessman who comes along and says, you know, the value of these coins could change over time. And the people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we got to get together and we need to make sure that the values of things are stabilized. Because if you come and buy a hundred bricks from me for one silver coin, I need to know that I can then get a hundred bricks worth of chicken or corn or whatever from you. This coin has to stay the same value. Businessman, you go away. Because if you come in and start playing with the value of the currency and making it go up and down, you can do funny tricks like, like buy a whole bunch of materials and stuff and then hold on to it. And then when people come to, to try to get them from you, you just say, no, the price is doubled. And that screws everything up. You didn't add any value to it. All, you, all you're doing is stealing at that point. You're taking our stuff and you're adding no value, businessman. We do not want you. So for a, for a period of time, they, they maintain the value of this dollar all through this agreement. But then businessman keeps coming in and just trying to, trying to find ways to, to screw with it, to mess it up. And he comes over and just, just you know, over time, he slowly starts messing things up. And then suddenly the dollar becomes, you know, becomes fluid. And now it's not, it's not based on any kind of precious metal anymore. It's just on, based on papers or, or even just numbers written down somewhere. Or now it's just numbers in a computer. And what do we have today? We have businessmen and women, business, business people, whose, whose entire job is to screw around with the value of things, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, you're a good business person, you're amazing, you're a good business person, because you've stolen, you've stolen things. Uh, we don't call it stealing now, we call it being a good, good business, that was a good investment, that was a good investment right there, because you bought low and you sold high. You, you took that thing that, that people could have used and you held on to it until it was more valuable and the people were really desperate and then you sold it for more. Just, just stealing value from the world and adding no value. So that, that's the problem. That's the problem with money right now. It's not the money, it's the people using it. The people, the people using the money as, as a way of, of, <laughs> of taking value from the people who are doing the actual work. That is the problem. Oh, and you wanna know what the solution to this is? Uh, it's right here, honor.